House is a 1977 Japanese horror film directed by Nobuhiko Obayashi. House is my favorite movie ever made. Beat out all the others. I'm deciding right now. I love this movie. It's perfect. And I had to make a cocktail based off of it because this movie's just so good. If you haven't seen it yet, stop. Well, actually, watch the video, make the drink, and enjoy it with the movie. It's the perfect blend of that kind of campy horror that I think is when horror is at its finest. And there is so much genius here from the editing to the writing to the horror scenarios. The film was originally conceived as the Japanese answer to Jaws following the commercial success of that movie. They wanted to kind of think, well, okay, we have this kind of summer blockbuster horror movie. What's the Japanese equivalent to a shark-filled beach? And they thought, a haunted house. The movie would not exist were it not for the vision of the director, Nobuhiko Obayashi. This was actually his first feature-length film ever, and there's nothing like it, I think, before it or since it. Prior to working on this film, Obayashi was, you know, an art film student, very into the avant-garde, seeing what can you do with film. So many of the effects are him literally physically editing the film and that that's so cool to me and a lot of these ideas come from his past before being a film director prior to this obayashi worked largely in commercials <laughs> And I think that shows a lot with some of these other things that he did. But somehow, some way, he was able to rope the people at Toho, a Japanese studio, into allowing him to write this film when they were looking for this kind of blockbuster hit. And I think he was playing a long con here because when the script was finished, it was essentially unintelligible to people. No directors at the studio wanted to film it because every single one of them thought it would end their career. And beyond that, too, the people in-house were just not sure how to make heads or tails of this idea. So two years later, it finally comes around that after pestering them long enough, they allow him to direct this movie. A lot of the scenarios in the movie and ideas present, he came up with not from some executives, not from some think tank, but actually by going to his pre-teen age daughter. When he was developing this, he said how adults are just dumb. When we think of scenarios, particularly in some kind of fantasy type scenario, we really only think of what our minds can comprehend. We lose so much of that kind of childhood, not just imagination, but like fear, I think is a big part of that imagination. So a lot of these things, in the movie are things that either scared his daughter or himself as a kid. So you have a lot of his daughter's fears in the movie present. So things like your own reflection attacking you or pulling a watermelon out of a well that turns out to be a human head. It's some of his things like an old grandfather clock that were just terrifying. Or my personal favorite scene in the movie, my favorite horror creature in it I guess, is the man-eating piano. I think back to being a kid, being terrified to ever play the Haunted Mansion level in Super Mario 64, which I'm sure no doubt was inspired by this movie, where there's this killer piano that will eat you and attack you, and that literally would give me nightmares at night. And I think in general, a haunted house has so much potential for a motif, and I wish more people would use it, and use it to this extent. Sadly, earlier this year, in April, Obayashi passed away. He had a very fruitful career, making incredible films, Beyond House, many of which are just incredible, and I encourage you all to look more into him, research him, and watch this movie. So for my house cocktail, I have decided to do essentially a Negroni variation that includes watermelon and Sakura as kind of the two forward flavors in it. And I know that generally Negronis will be stirred, however, given the watermelon juice, I think shaken is the better way to go here. If you guys have seen my Negroni video, then you know that's a very simple cocktail to make. Three even parts, gin, Campari, or another bitter, and sweet vermouth. I am playing with that today yet again, and I added a little something extra. So while many of my recipes on the channel are not typically ingredient specific, with this one, it's much more determinant, I guess, on having this gin and this vermouth in particular. First things first, you love her or you hate her, just one ounce of Campari. You could use another bitter here, but I think that Campari, in my opinion, worked the best with the watermelon. Now up next, we're gonna be using our vermouth. 
So the vermouth I ended up going for here was the Mancino Sakura Vermouth. It's this cool fusion of Italian and Japanese flavors. There's a lot of violet and Sakura here, but it's incredible and it is very lovely in any cocktail, specifically this one. That being said, these ingredients are pretty hard to source. I will see if I can find a place you can order them online and put that in the description. So now I'm gonna do one ounce of this. Up next for our gin, Roku is a gin by Suntory that came out, I want to say a few years back, at least in the West, and it kind of just took the gin community in world by storm. It uses a bunch of Japanese botanicals. There's some Sancho peppers, some Sencha tea, Sakura, and some Yuzu peel. All just flavors you don't typically find in your gins. So it really stands out, I think, on the shelf. And it's just delicious. It works wonderfully with the Sakura Vermouth in particular. And like Inyo Negroni, we're just using one ounce of this. Last, but certainly not least in this cocktail, we're gonna use half of an ounce of watermelon juice. To juice the watermelon, it's very simple. Literally just scoop it on up into a blender, blend it, and strain it over a cheesecloth, a mesh strainer, really anything, into a bottle and you're good to go. So just half an ounce of this. So just add one whole cube into here and one cracked cube. Now shake it on up. Now grab your glass. I prefer a coupe for this, but you know, you could use an old fashioned glass. Place my cube on in here. Now get your strainer and strainer on over the cube of ice. And there you have your Sakura Watermelon Negroni for house. Let's give it a taste. Oh, that's so good. Watermelon is a flavor that people don't use enough with bitterness. To me, it's reminiscent of bitter melon in a lot of ways. You get a really fresh taste from the watermelon hitting your mouth, which is immediately met with that snappiness of the Campari. There's a lot of Sakura, obviously, there. It's a very floral drink, too. I don't want to hide that side of it either. Both the botanicals in the Roku Gin and the Mancino Sakura Vermouth. Floral, bitter, very fresh from that watermelon. I mean, it's so refreshing. A lot of people don't think of a Negroni when they think of refreshing. They think of just kind of that overwhelming bitterness. So if you haven't seen the movie, make this drink, watch House, 